Good day traders, this is a trade site trade recap. I wanted to walk you through a trade call we made on Apple on uh, April 17th, 2013. That was a Wednesday. And walk you through where the, the call came from and how it played out. There's a lot of factors on this call. For those of you that are familiar with our secret tool that we use with eSignal 11, uh, that was a big piece of how this trade played out, but it wasn't in the usual way. And so let me walk you through this chart. This is the daily chart of Apple, and I'm using bar replay mode, so we're back into uh, late January at this point in time. I'm going to walk you through uh, what was a seeker actual buy signal. Um, if you look at uh, this nine bar green count right here, uh, we have what's called a nine bar setup that then gapped down on earnings back in January. And this started the red count, which is our seeker count. We're going to look for a, it gets up to 13, we'll give you a buy signal on that. So let's go to bar replay mode and just paste forward here. And I'll expand the chart a little bit so you can see the lower numbers. Uh, so here's, as we moved into February and as we worked our way through February, one of the things about uh, the seeker tool uh, is that uh, unlike the Comer tool, you can get bars like this before without making new lows on the chart. So in other words, we've got the one, the two, and then the three. Up here, using our two bar look back criteria, we are making the fourth and fifth bar. And then you see you get this rally. Now you're getting six and seven. They're above number one. Okay, so there's no downward trend in the market, even though we're getting a downward count out of the seeker tool. That's really important in this particular example. That's really what I was doing this video for, is to demonstrate what that means. Now you're gonna hear a loud sound here because the next day on this chart when I hit it, uh, we're gonna get that 13. Uh, signal. And there it is. So now what we had at this point, and this is late February, this is technically a buy signal on Apple, and you're going to notice the pink line right here. This is the risk line uh, that's going to play out on this chart. So let's keep an eye on this pink risk line moving forward here, and I'm going to keep extending this chart, but let's keep in mind, again, this is the one, here's your 13, which is the actual buy signal, and you'll notice that really we didn't make any progress, and that's not really giving us the type of exhaustion signal that we like to see out of the seeker. So we have this risk line, which tells us if the signal fails, for those who take a buy entry off of this, whether or not you get a chance to actually make any money, you use the pink line for stopping out. So let's go ahead and walk it forward and see what happens. Now keep in mind, this is still back in, uh, heading into March here, as you can see. And you can see there's the risk line, okay? And we also had a gap to fill at 420 from back last year on the chart. So we were kind of monitoring that area as well. Let's see what happens here. You reach down, you break under that risk line almost immediately. You fill the gap at 420. You don't proceed lower. Now, the way the risk line is supposed to work is if you close underneath it and then break the low of that day, that's a violation of the risk line. That means that the, the risk line is, is, is broken and you should stop out of the trade. That did not happen. Instead, we reached down and filled the gap. So now we get a little bounce and we'll watch what happens over the course of March as we start to head upward, actually. So the signal from that perspective did call below and you can see we never get a close below the risk line and then head lower the next day and get close below that. So the, if it did, by the way, this pink line over here that you see that's dashed, okay, that's what a broken risk line looks like. So the fact that we never actually got the criteria to stop out of the trade is pretty interesting. But that's back in February heading into March and let's see what happens. The market climbs here. And what you're going to see is we're going to get a new nine bar setup to the upside. So here's that and again you get a little loud noise here from that. That means you've got a nine bar setup phase complete to the upside. And because of that, it means that the trade works. So in other words, you get your 13 buy signal, you get all the way up to here, this would be sort of proof that the market did reverse off of this 13 signal. But again, it wasn't much of a move. I mean, just look at the drifting around in here was even greater than the move up. Okay, and again, that's because of the fact that this one to 13 really didn't go anywhere itself. There wasn't a lot of energy in the market. So what we have now is the 420 area that we were watching, because it had been the low, it basically was the violation of that risk level. It was the low of it, the attempt to break that pink line while we had it. And even though we got the move up, we're now watching this area. Now, what you're also gonna notice, you can barely see it here on the chart, is that there was another gap left behind. After we hit 420, the next morning we gapped up. So we need to go back and fill that gap from a technical perspective. And here we go, heading back down, and now we're into April, and you can see that we do hit that gap fill at 420 again, okay? And that's great. And so now what we've kind of got is an inverted cup formation here, but maybe part of what could be a broader cup formation here, and certainly we're in a downtrend, there's no uh, denying that. 
So at this point in time, to us, the significant point on the chart is this 420 level. Why? Because it's the low of the attempt to violate that risk line. It also was this gap fill, and it's been drawing the market in. And watch what happens after this. A little move up. There's your handle forming on the inverted cup and handle, right? And here it is. This is the pattern we like to see. A, an inverted cup and handle formation against a key area that we've been watching, which is that 420. Rich called the short Wednesday morning under 419 on Apple. Under 419, right under the lows of that setup. And look what happened. Boom. Big move down, right? Oops, sorry. All the way to 400 in one day. And then today so far, down even lower into the 390s. That's a very key technical trade because it was such an important area from a construction perspective to break in the market. And then you got that inverted cup and handle formation on top of it. So look at the volume on that move as well. This is a real nice call by Rich. A real good example of how to use the seeker in a couple of different ways to spot key areas of anything, a stock, futures, forex. We can do all this with this eSignal product and find entry points for really solid trades. And again, on this trade, what were you really risking? I mean, we would have used maybe a buck, buck and a half as a stop, but with such a key breakdown, this was a high probability trade. It's working very well for us.